Eddie Radosovich, George Stoy here from Chapman Stadium in Tulsa. Oklahoma wins 66-17. They approved a 3-0 and on the season, George. And, uh, you know, it's hard to walk out of here. By the way, this is take number two, so you get it. It's been that kind of day. Uh, a pretty impressive performance, though, nonetheless, for Oklahoma. They win 66-17. Uh, a lot of positive, right? And there was some negatives. you got to get better on third down. We'll get into plenty of that kind of stuff. But just your overall thoughts. I know it was an interesting question that you had for Brent Venables after the game, just in terms of they were 3-0 and a year ago. And I remember doing that postgame podcast with uh, Kerry Murdoch on the way back from Lincoln thinking the defense had arrived. Everything was looking so positive, And then the bottom fell out, obviously. So just kind of your overall thoughts on the 66-17 win today. Uh, you know, look, it was impressive, right? They, they came out, they dominated the way that we thought they should. There were some ups and downs. We'll get into the running game, which I think is maybe the biggest concern. The defense had some plays here and there, some drives that Tulsa was able to go down and score. And you knew Kevin Wilson was going to be able to do some of that stuff. I mean, he's a great play caller. Uh, and, you know, Tulsa's got some decent players. So uh, you knew that was going to happen. But overall, I, I thought it was an impressive performance. They were able to get whatever they wanted through the air. Dylan Gabriel was fantastic again today. Uh, he's been super efficient, it seems, all season. I mean, at 28 of 31, 417 yards, five touchdowns. One interception, which really, again, he's putting the ball up, trying to make a play. That happens. Uh, you know, the defense, five interceptions. I mean, what more can you ask from them in terms of getting turnovers, getting those takeaways? So I thought it was an impressive performance. But I think, Eddie, in the back of everyone's mind is what happened last year. And they start 3-0. and They look great. They came back at home, uh, lose to Kansas State. This time they turn around. They go to Cincinnati, a team that – they should be, right? Uh, Cincinnati's been playing good football recently, but uh, it's one of those situations where, you know, what does it actually look like after the 3-0? and So uh, that's kind of – I think there's people that are hesitant. I think they look at these first three games and say, okay, Oklahoma played well. Uh, they, they, they look like they're better than they were last year, but after what happened – a year ago, I think everybody's a little bit hesitant to jump on the train just yet. And rightfully so. Let's talk about Oklahoma offensively today. They uh, got out of the gates rather quickly. Uh, the Gentry Williams uh, interception, yeah. uh, or after the Jalil Farouk fumble on the opening kickoff, uh, they all of a sudden you they bounce in and it's 28 to nothing uh, right then and there. Dylan Gabriel, another really solid day, as you said. Yeah, they, look, the game plan Jeff Levy told us after the game was to throw the ball around. You saw last week they weren't able to get a lot going through the air. Um, you know, Dylan Gabriel threw for less than 200 yards last week. This week he throws for over, over 400. I mean, statistically it was one of his best performances uh, in his career. So for him to go out there and, and perform the way he did, I think was really impressive. And you got to see that wide receiver room. It's funny, all offseason we said, what do they have at wide receiver? Uh, and we, we said we thought they felt good at running back. I think that role is kind of reversed, right? I mean, you look now in that – that receiver room has got a lot of guys. Nick Anderson, three catches, three touchdowns. He looks like a guy that could maybe be a, a, a difference maker for this group. Andrew Anthony continues to play really well. And then Jalil Farouk, uh, you know, I talk bad about him on the podcast, and he goes out and has probably the best game of his career. So uh, they've got a lot of playmakers. It feels like they, things are coming together through the air. It's just that running game, it just hasn't clicked yet. Nick Anderson, an exceptional afternoon for the uh, retro freshman. Yep. Three touchdowns. The the throw from Jackson Arnold, as you see here, uh, was I mean, he just dropped it right in the bucket. But he's starting to become a playmaker. And I think that when you look at Andrell Anthony, as you said, and what he's been able to give you, Jalil Farouk with over 100 receiving yards today, as well as 100 in the return game, uh, it was it's it's another positive step for Oklahoma offensively, is it not? Oh, yeah, 100%. And, and I think there was a lot of question marks regarding, like I said, the receiver room, but also Dylan Gabriel. What was he going to look like this season? Could he improve upon some of the accuracy issues a year ago? Well, through three games, he's had, had his two most efficient performances in terms of accuracy, completion percentage. His, his career best was Arkansas State uh, when he went 19 of 22. This, this time he goes 28 of 31, even better completion percentage. So, so far, the decision-making has been really good for Dylan Gabriel. I think he's taking what's, what's being given to him by, while also being aggressive. Um, you know, I think he's thrown, what, 11 touchdown passes through three games already. So he's on pace to, to really, uh, you know, have a great year. And I think that that's what, that's what you feel good about this offense. But – uh, I hate. I don't want to be a negative Nelly, Eddie. Well, but. Let's let's go. I know where you're yeah. going with that, but let's let's stay positive here. It's a post game show. They did win 66-17 today. Uh, let's let's stay defensively. 
Yeah. Five turnovers today. Uh, Danny Stutzman has the the pick six. Gentry Williams got the ball back from uh, uh, on the on the opening possession after the Jalil Farouk fumble. But the five interceptions today. It seems like at the end of the day, as bad as this defense has been. They're making plays that they just simply weren't a year ago. Yeah, and it was it was five different guys that had those interceptions, right? You had Trace Ford, Danny Stutzman, Kendall Dolby, Key Lawrence, and Gentry Williams. So uh, it just t- again kind of speaks to that competitive depth. Uh, take a drink, right? Uh, but he, you know, th- they have so many different guys, and they're rotating so many different players in there. I think that's why you also saw them, you know, Tulsa be able to move the ball. They were trying to get some different guys, some different snaps. Uh, but when that first team defense was out there. They were elite. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do at Cheetah. Peyton Bowen got a lot of those snaps today. Reggie Pearson as well. Uh, even Kip Lewis was playing some Cheetah out there today. I, I, I think anybody that has watched us in the shows here on the Soonershoop.com YouTube channel, the more, more Kip Lewis – the better for Oklahoma defensively. Buying the stock. They're so stacked at that linebacker spot right now, too. I, and, and, you know, I tweeted out during the game, but Britt has always been so good in his career at getting his best players on the field. And I think he probably noticed through those first couple games that Kip's got to be on the field. And so they're going to find ways to get him in the game. But, again, I think it speaks to just how many guys they, they feel comfortable with. And they continue to be really good in the run game. Uh, you know, they, they've been able to stop the run really well. You know, I know everybody's wondering about the pass rush. Tulsa did a lot of different things today to kind of avoid that. And they did get after him at, towards the end of the game. I mean, how about P.J. Adebare, a guy that, another guy that it seems like He's going to start finding a, a bigger role on this team. I, I think that they feel really good defensively right now. Danny Stutzman, you mentioned him. I mean, every week it seems like he just gets better and better. I mean, the pick six today, um, you know, he just seems so comfortable and confident out there. Uh, you, you like what you're seeing on the defensive side of the ball. There, there's there's very little complaints right now. P.J. Adebore, it, it seems like, and he even got a little postgame love uh, talking to the media after the game. It seems like he's getting more and more. In, in terms of snaps, and it seems like he's becoming more comfortable out on the field. He had his first career sack today. Yeah. Uh, it was it, it, You can see the light starting to come on for him. Worried about the pass rush? I know that you said that Tulsa did a little some things differently today. I know that that's going to be a key talking point moving forward for Oklahoma is getting uh, pressure on the quarterback, but it's, it's the damnedest thing, George, because it seems like they're getting pressure – they're just not getting home. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's been there's been some instances. I mean, today Tulsa did a lot of things where they're rolling out Cardell Williams to get out of the pocket, and and that makes it tough as a defense. And they did some you know seven eight man protections today, a lot like Arkansas State did. But it's interesting, Eddie. They're not winning the one on ones on the edge. That's where you thought they might get some of those those sacks and those plays. But um, you know, and they are in the run game. That's the thing is they're getting a lot of tackles for loss. But uh, you know, I, I don't know. And maybe a, a PJ Atabare can can get there. Um, you know, I think they're going to have to get creative, though. I think they're going to have to bring some of these blitzes. It seems like, you know, when they bring a Stutzman or a Canik, they've been able to get home a couple times. So I wonder if, if Brent starts to get a little more creative in terms of how they're bringing pressure and helping that pass rush. But right now, just it's just the, it's not statistically showing up. I think you watch the game, and you're like, okay, they're getting there. They're just not, you know, uh, able to, like you said, get home or, or actually bring the guy down. So um, I'm not I'm not too concerned just yet. Uh, but it's definitely something to watch. I, I think if there's if you're going to nitpick anything with the defense through three games, it's the pass rush. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, let's get into a little bit of the negatives from today. And I believe me, we know when you win 66-17, there's not going to be a whole lot of negatives. But it does seem like the Oklahoma running game is it, it's something that we're going to talk about throughout the week as Oklahoma heads up to Cincinnati to open conference play. You have to be able to be a little bit more balanced. And not that they're not trying to run. It just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot there right now. And I don't know what, what the problem is. I, I think a lot of us, you know, last week were, well, why aren't they playing Javante Barnes and Gavin Sawchuck? And, and, you know, this week they played those guys. Those guys got the bulk of the carries today, and it still wasn't there. And so, you know, is it an offensive line issue? I do think there's some of that in play. I think that they're not getting a great push. Um, the cohesion, you know, Savion Bird, you know, he's been kind of rotating in and out of that left guard spot. We saw Caden Green play some left guard today, which I like the potential of Caden Green. I just don't know if he's – a guard. Uh, you know, Troy Everett played there a little bit today. We saw Jacob Sexton come in at left tackle, uh, which was great to see him. But, you know, Eddie, I think it comes down to schematically, I don't know if they really have an identity in what they want to do in the run game. I think they need to maybe simplify, sim- simplify it a little bit, run some more outside zones, some things like that. We haven't really seen the, the GT counter, which is what Bill Biedenboe's, uh, you know, kind of known for. I, I don't know. I, it, it's just not clicking right now. And I don't know 
if again, who who all's to? It's probably a combination, right? Everybody's to blame, but. Uh, that's something that come Big 12 play, you're going to need to be able to run the football, especially if you're winning games late. You need to run out the clock. You need to go on a you know five minute drive. Um, you know that that needs to needs to work. So I don't know what the solution is, Eddie. Maybe maybe we'll see some more. I mean, I thought Dalen Smothers at the end of the game had a nice run. You know, maybe you throw him out there. I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, but. That, at, that's at the a, end of the day, they just got to block it better, it seems yeah. like. And that's from a very, like, down on the field, it just doesn't look like there's a whole lot of holes there. And maybe and when there are, it doesn't seem like the running backs are hitting them. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's they're not blocking it well. I think, you know, schematically, there's just a lot going on. You watch them run, there's a lot of pulling and a lot of movement up front. There's a lot of motioning in the backfield. It's like, I, I, I wonder if they just need to simplify it. I don't know. And then you have, and then we haven't even talked about the Jackson Arnold I, package. I wanted to ask you, and I, I think that like that's something that even down there at the uh, the goal line right before halftime, and you have to settle for a field goal. Are they trying to get too cute? Yeah. Like, and, and maybe that's because they can't just turn around and run the ball people down people's throats, but it seems like I get it. Like, I, I, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to get them a little love. They're trying to get them some, uh, some experience under center. But at yeah. the same time, and I, I mean this in the nicest way possible, he's not Blake Bell. He's not a 6'6 guy that you're turning around and giving the football to. It seems like that whole entire running experience right now is just – it's, it's at, the, at the very least, it's a work of progress. And, and what worries you about it is – if they need to pick up a yard in a critical situation, can they do it? I'm not sure. We haven't seen it quite yet this season, at least at a consistent level. So that's the part that's concerning about it. And look, Jackson Arnold is not Blake Bell. And I think that they're using him in this belldozer way that just doesn't work. And so I, you know, I think they need to maybe scrap it or, or do something different with it. Um, you know, I'd like to see Tawi Walker get those short yardage carries. We didn't see that today a whole lot. So. Didn't see Tawi Walker really at all today. It was, it was odd. And, and you know, I, I think some of that was, again, they wanted to get Javante and, and Gavin the bulk of the carries today. But I thought after a while when it wasn't working that we'd see some Tawi Walker and we didn't. So I don't know, man. It's That's an interesting storyline heading into Big 12 play because, like I said, there's going to be times where they need to run some clock or, hey, it's fourth and one and first down wins you the football game. Can you get it? Uh, I don't know. Right now I, I, you know, I don't feel confident in that for Oklahoma. So those are some things they need to get figured out. I'll tell you, Cincinnati will test them. In, that, in the run game. They, they've got a solid defensive line, probably one of the better defensive lines in the Big 12. So uh, we're going to find out a lot more about this football team next week uh, in Cincinnati. Let's talk about it real quick before we get out of here. Oklahoma headed out to Cincinnati next weekend, Nippert Stadium. A noon kickoff on the East Coast. Obviously, it's going to be 11 a.m. back here in Oklahoma. But, uh, you know, I, I think that this is a game, and we talked about it on the Unofficial 40. We talked about it right here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel. Just as far as I think that when the when the schedule came out way back when, and even maybe at the beginning of August, you go, okay, that's going to be a win, whatever. I, I think this is a, a very big measuring stick as far as where this Oklahoma a team is, how they traveled, a true travel experience for the first time, and what should be, I would imagine, a pretty hostile environment next week. This should answer our question. Of, well, maybe not totally answer our question, but is this team different than last year, right? And, and not just, you know, going from 3-0 and to 4-0 and versus last year losing, you know, and going 3-1, and but just how they resp- how they respond because this is their first big test, right? And I, you know, I think SMU was a good test, uh, but you're at home, you know, you, you're feeling good after the 73-0 win. I mean, this is this is where you know, are you for real? And 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 you know, I think we'll find out that more so in Dallas when they play Texas. But uh, this is a big game, and then like you said, it'll be. Th- this was not a road environment today. I, you know, I, I thought it was funny when Brent said, you know, oh, you know, our first. You know, road game, and yes, it is a road game. But I mean, it was. What, what do you think it was like? Seventy thirty. Seventy thirty. OU fans, and and I mean, it was it was very clearly in favor of OU. And again, it's not a long road trip either. That's right down the turnpike, Cincinnati. You're flying across the country. Sure. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. So I, I think that th- that's going to be. We're going to know a lot more about this football team. Uh, come Saturday at noon in Cincinnati. As we close out here today, Oklahoma wins 66-17. Just kind of your overall thoughts. Uh, we're three games into this thing. You're now done with uh, non-conference play. I, I, the way Brent talked after the game, I thought it was interesting. I, I think he feels like they could be pretty good, but there are a litany of things that they're going to have to start checking those boxes if they really want to get to the level of uh, you know, 
getting back to what Oklahoma football should be and getting back to a Big 12 championship, getting your name in a college football playoff. I know it's still way, way early for that kind of stuff, but just kind of your overall thoughts, both sides of the football. I, you know, I just think there's, there's concerns here and there, but I do think they're better than they were last year. And I, I think you can see certain instances of, of whether it's, you know, they have more playmakers. I, I really do believe that just going through three games, I think they have more play. They maybe not, don't have a Marvin Mims necessarily, who is just a superstar at wide receiver, but they've got way more guys there than they did a year ago. Um, you know, I think that the running game is something you're a little bit concerned about, but I think that's something you can get figured out. Uh, and then defensively, they're just, I think it's night and day. I mean, the, Brent Venables talked about it. it. He talked about, I think it was way back during the spring, we're going to be on a different planet. I, they might not even be in the same – I don't know, like universe. I, I don't even know. I'm, yeah. I don't know if space is real. I, to be honest with you, we could do thirty minutes on that. But no, it, well, now we're getting kicked off YouTube. <laughs> but it, it, they, they have playmakers, yeah. and they have guys that are, are making plays that you just simply didn't see a year ago. It's a step in the right direction. It seems like uh, you know Danny Stutzman's a perfect example, and it's somebody that you mentioned at the top. It seems like he's getting better each week. Yep. And he's making plays that impact the game. He had the pick six today. Uh, just overall, real quick, your thoughts defensively. Well, I think it's Danny's the perfect example of what Brent's talking about. And I, I kind of asked that to Brent today. But, like, where he was a year ago to where he is now, he's just so much more confident in what he's doing. He's a better player. He's seeing things really well. I mean, the pick six was a great play today because he read the play right. Um, you know, that's that's just a great play. And so I, And then you add on top of that – they just have more talent, Eddie. Uh, when you replace, a, you know, I've used this analogy before, but when you replace, you know, a Justin Broyles with a Reggie Pearson or a Peyton Bowen or a Deshaun White with a, a Desal McCulloch, who we didn't see today, but you know, a, a Kip Lewis or whoever out there, you're just gonna improve. And and then up front, and again, I know they're not getting home just yet, but they have so many more bodies up there. I mean, you had a PJ out of bar, right? They didn't have a guy like that last year that you could bring in in the second half and just let him go and dominate the game, right? So uh, that's where you just feel like. Like, look, they, they still have a lot to prove this year, uh, and it, they're going to have some tough moments, and it's going to be interesting to see how they respond. But I just can't imagine they, they don't end up finishing this year a lot better after this start just because of how many more guys they have. And just, again, the guys that were here last year, they just seem to have improved. I mean, even Key Lawrence, yeah. Eddie. I mean, look at how much better he is this year versus last year where he just looked lost. I mean, this year he's playing confident. He's making plays. So uh, I think all those things give you confidence that – this thing is headed in the right direction. You know, and quietly, it seems like, and, and maybe this is just because there's nothing to really pinpoint or point at from a special teams uh, perspective, they've been very solid. Outside yeah. of the Jalil Farouk uh, fumble, which was still a great return, yeah. uh, they've been very, very solid. And, you know, they haven't, they haven't been asked to do a whole lot from the special teams, but you had the block punt a week ago from Peyton Bowen. Jalil Farouk had over 100 yards uh, in the return game today. It seems like he's going to break one at some point. You know, just looking at the guys, too, that they have involved out there, you're talking about, you're talking about depth. You're talking about, uh, you lots know, of lots of young guys. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Omasigo's on, I think, a lot of the, the uh, special teams. You know, Kip Lewis. I mean, you've got just a, a, a litany of, you know, freshmen and sophomores out there making plays on special teams, and it just seems like – Things are clicking for them, and that's where you find a role, and you you know you work your way into playing on offense and defense. But yeah, I mean the special teams have been great. We'll see. I mean, the, the, who was it today that had the one punt? Uh, Josh Plaster, I mm -hmm. think, had a really nice punt there towards the end of the game. So um, you know, I think they feel pretty good about where they're at. Zach Schmidt hasn't really been tested yet. I wonder, you know, if he's you know the next time he has to kick a long field goal, what that looks like. But um, you know, I think they feel good about their special teams. So far, so good. Oklahoma improves to three and zero on the season. First conference game. Coming up next week in Cincinnati, we'll be back here on Monday, Tuesday for uh, some wrap-up with coordinators as well as Brent Venable's weekly press conference on Tuesday, previewing what will be a conference week from Tulsa, from H.A. Chapman Stadium. He's George Stoya. I'm Eddie Radosevich. We'll talk to you on the other side.